morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on AMHQ Early. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. Much more on that historic heat wave in the Pacific Northwest in just a moment. But let's begin in the Midwest, and that's where we'll be watching for storms this afternoon. The maps, and we'll show you what we will find out there. As we see our front, our warm front now surging all the way through Wisconsin and lower Michigan. It's along that to the south of it in the warm sector today that will be the focus for possible severe weather. A lot of unstable air, especially down here across northern parts of Illinois, getting into Indiana, up into Wisconsin. Wisconsin as well, because that happens to be where we're going to cross both the instability and some jet stream energy that's going to phase right into this region as well. So the possibility for severe weather, hail, damaging winds is the most likely threat with these thunderstorms, but there's also a tornado risk. We'll have that turning of the winds with height from the surface. Winds will be from the south. They go up to, you know, about 20,000 feet. Winds will be from the west. So that means we've got a three on our Torcon in southern Wisconsin. Today, the threat for hail an inch in size or greater um, is about a medium threat and it's perhaps a little bit higher than what you might usually expect for an August system because we got some cold air aloft coming in over this as well. The threat for damaging winds medium as well. This is how the forecast radar plays out for the afternoon. Let me show you this timing it out through Minneapolis thunderstorms coming in. They may or may not be severe there, but more likely these ones that developed this afternoon into Illinois and into Wisconsin will be severe reaction. All right, so today we're going to find more thunderstorms in the northeast. Any of these could bring some big heavy downpours not moving a lot like we saw yesterday. That would mean the concern for flooding tomorrow. The front gets closer, brings in the risk for severe weather, and we'll see that across western Pennsylvania and western New York. Still some thunderstorms are possible this evening. These are more sort of the garden variety thunderstorms. It's tomorrow's weather that we really have to be on guard for possible severe Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, all in that red zone. We'll see the chance for storms moving into central Pennsylvania into the evening and then by or Saturday thunderstorms heading into the northeast, the I-95 corridor, but then exiting off the coast after that. All right, let's head coast to coast right now and check your Thursday weather headlines. Three. All right, Portland, Oregon. It is hot, so a record high of 103 for your Wednesday. Whew. Not the all-time hottest, but uh, definitely a daily record. Now, the hottest spot in the state was in Medford. We hit 112. Also not the all-time hottest, but up there. So the last time we were 112 in Medford was back in 1981. More on these scorching temperatures that we're talking about out here in the northwest. Today will be some of the hottest numbers, actually. Yesterday was hot. Today will be hotter. We've got the excessive heat warnings up again from Washington, Oregon, into California and Nevada. We are going to be looking at this pattern, this big ridge of high pressure, hanging on strong. This is not changing. So the heat continues to be a huge story out here. Temperatures running 20 to 30 degrees above average. And and when you get to that level, 30 degrees plus above average, that's when you start talking records. So 95 in Seattle, 105 in Portland, 106 in Eugene. We're looking at numbers like in Portland, for example, that rank up with some of your top 10 warmest days on record uh, ever, you know, in terms of record keeping. Now, tomorrow, the numbers start to come down a little bit. 97 in Portland. So we get you out of the triple digits. Saturday, we get it down to 92. So today is the peak of the heat. And this heat uh, across the northwest is going to be pretty, br pretty brutal. Look at Medford, Oregon, 111 for today. We keep it up in the triple digits until Monday, and even then we're staying up at about 100 degrees. Now, for us here into Eugene, you know, where you might not expect it to be so hot, temperatures average 84 degrees. We're up above that through the extended period, today being the peak of the heat, with a temperature reaching 106, which of course would be be a record. All right, let's take a look at your Portland, Oregon forecast 105 today. You know, up here in the Northwest, only a third of the households have air conditioning. So you are literally sweating it out with this heat. And the Weather Channel's Mike Seidel is sweating it out in Portland during this historic heat wave, but he's found a few ways to Oh, in Tallahassee and really across the Florida Panhandle, you've uh, locked out this week with some dry air to start. That's all changing. This boundary that we've been watching, same one that came down into Central Florida, and that's the same boundary that Emily formed on and moved out, but now it's waved back north as a warm front and it's bringing the moisture with it. So big difference in dew points. When you step outside, you feel a huge change and we have a new front coming in this week. Is this one going to clear the coast and dry us out? Not this time. This guy actually gets stuck across the southeast. So what happens is all this moisture that the warm front is bringing up right now gets pooled into the southeast and it just increases our chance of thunderstorms coming into the next couple of days right across the Gulf Coast. So for New Orleans and for Gulfport, Mobile, um, Panama City, Tallahassee, you all have an increased chance of thunderstorms today. Also tomorrow, spreading up through South Georgia, up towards Macon, getting up towards Columbia, South Carolina, Charleston. You know, you guys are getting some rain this morning in the area. We're going to get rain you know, pretty much off and on every single day through the entire weekend. How much rain, you are asking? Um, 
a big deluge perhaps in some local areas, especially along the Gulf Coast where we could see about three to five inches in some of the more you know locally heavier thunderstorms that are most persistent. Overall, it's one to two or two to three inch kind of rain along the I-20 corridor and points northward. It's about an inch or so in terms of rainfall. Now in Houston, we've got the chance of a few showers this morning, then coming back again into the afternoon. Friday and Saturday will keep that chance of thunderstorms ongoing. All right, what about the weekend? It is Thursday. We we'll call it Friday Eve. Thunderstorms today will be felt across the upper Midwest. This is where we could see severe weather. Chicago, Madison, Milwaukee, you guys are all in that red zone. That front moves east. And with it, thunderstorms continue to move east. We'll see that into Cleveland, into Pittsburgh, into Buffalo by tomorrow. Behind it, we have much cooler air, drier air too. Now, Chicago, the 66, maybe not the best of days. It's going to be cloudy, kind of coolish, a little raw out there to be quite honest. But then by Saturday, it really looks nice because as the front moves east, you'll see um, all of sort of the moisture go with it as well. So Chicago, your Saturday 80 is great. By Sunday, our next system coming in already, and we got another chance of rain coming our way. And coming up this morning, we've had to tell you about the record pace of hot car deaths over the last few months. Tornado. So here's how it's all going to play out. Here's our storm system, our surface low, our cold front, our warm front. In that warm sector, which is in this triangle area in between the low and the two fronts, is where we have the most humid air and the most instability. So today, watching especially from Illinois to Indiana, that's where some of the, um, the CAPE or the convective available potential energy, the you know uh, amount of energy in the atmosphere for thunderstorm clouds to grow and grow tall and grow strong and grow fast, that's there. But the upper level dynamics or the stronger jet stream winds are back here moving in to southern Wisconsin today. So that area happens to be the spot that's most likely to see some of the stronger storms with hail um, and an isolated tornado as well. There is a three in our Torcon here in southern Wisconsin, but pretty much throughout the entire red zone, you could see storms with hail or damaging winds today. It's about a medium threat. Uh, Madison, Milwaukee, Davenport, Springfield, Chicago, all in that at risk for not just hail, but also damaging winds. We could be looking at some trees coming down that could take out some power lines. So be ready for that risk into the afternoon. That's when storms are most likely. Here's the forecast. The future radar for today this morning. Fine in Illinois, but we do have some rain and thunderstorms out there this morning in Minnesota. That's on the move. It's the new thunderstorms that get going about three o'clock this afternoon that could be strong to severe here in the Midwest. All right, so today, Northeast forecast here. It's not too much different than yesterday. Most of your day just fine, but then this afternoon, we'll watch those storm clouds start bubbling up, and you may get a big, heavy downpour. That's the case across Pennsylvania, New York, into the tri-state area, and continuing this evening, too. New York City, still the chance for some thunderstorms. Tomorrow, the front gets closer, and when that happens, we get into the red zone. The chance for severe weather from Buffalo to Pittsburgh. Thunderstorms could be bringing some strong winds. You know the kind that take down the tree in your front yard that you've been watching for a while. That's a concern. We get you into Saturday. That threat moves into the northeast throughout the day and then behind it some cooler and drier air. Let's go coast to coast right now for your Thursday morning weather headlines. 